Hey, welcome back to another video. So today we'll be looking at stylized materials, specifically the recent League of Legends series on Netflix Arcane. We will be looking at how to achieve this hand-painted look fully procedural with vanilla designer notes in quite a small graph. So the screenshot on the left is from the series and the material will be based upon the piece of reference. So for your viewing pleasures, this whole video will be broken down into chapters. What you can do if you just want to know about how to use different techniques for making the diffuse map, or if you want to learn a certain subject, all you have to do is just scroll down into the description. You have all the time marks right there and select from there. All the chapters in this video will be on screen right now as well. So you have a nice little index so you know what's to come and what you can learn from it. We will be going over the high creation and some different coloring techniques to achieve the style. So just as always, we won't be wasting any time, let's head straight into it. We'll be going over the high creation for these planks, the plaster and the paper right here, even though that's just purely diffuse. We'll go over a general overview first of each section, then build it from scratch and at the end we will have a small recap and while doing it I will go over the thought process as well. Alright, so to start off with, we have our four noises right here. A pertinent noise, a directional noise, a cloud 2 and a shape. The settings are quite basic, the shape is used for the planks over here. While the cloud 2, directional noise 4 and the pertinent noise are used for deformation. As you can see as well, the output size is lowered quite a bit with the pearl noise having a normal 2K texture while the directional noise 4 and clouds 2 have a lot smaller texture. We'll be going over that as well. So we start up with a tiles generator to create the planks, heading over to a slow blur grayscale to get some tileization going. So as you can see in the reference as well, the space between the planks can be quite tight and with a slow blur grayscale with the Direction noise for input, you can get that style quite easily. Then, as you can see right in the reference, there's some moss build up. I'm just gonna call it moss build up. Um, to get that, I used a histogram scan on a pro noise right here. Together with this mask part here, we'll be making in a second to get the build up going. But since we don't want everything to be white down here, you want some of the space between the planks to flow over. I used a directional warp with a histogram scan node from this bad boy right here to basically pull down some of the planks. From there on we had some height variation with the same node over here. As you can see it does quite a lot. So we're already heading into some detailing. I used a multi-directional warp grayscale to pretty much warp it with itself to get these lines going right here as you can see here too. I blend them. I blend them on quite a low opacity as you can see it's quite strong if you crank it up. And for some additional detailing I use a slow blur grayscale to get this shape going right here. I warped pretty much the warped planks and I blend them over as you can see right there to create some more detail. And just to make room from, for the plaster I cut it off right here with a mask. So to get started with the planks you want to head space and get a tile generator in. For me you want to set the Y amount to 0 and let's say the X amount to 13. Set the intercess amount to 0 0.03. And besides the intercess you want to set everything to 0, especially the pattern specific. You want to set it to 0 as well to get the planks going. From here you want to hit Ctrl D with the node selected, drag it up and you want to double click to get the parameters going. And you want to head over to Luminance Random and just crank that up a little bit. As you can see we get some color variation going. From there get yourself a directional warp with a purlin noise. Let's crank down the noise a little bit. Hook it up and this should already be plenty. So for the noises what I'm going to do is just copy these right here and bring them over here. What you can do yourself is just hit space and type in pertinent noise and there you go. So for the pertinent noise I use a normal output size, set the scale to 4, a small disorder and a random seed of 5. But you can just play around with, with the settings you like. For the directional noise 4 I have set everything to its default state, only the output size is minus 4. Same for the clouds, normal settings but the output size is set to minus 3. 
and for the shape it's all pretty much the same only the size cranked down a tiny bit while i has been cranked down quite a bit to get the following shape going so now you want to get in a slow blur grayscale and believe me this is going to be your favorite note when making stylized materials so let's hook up our tile generator in the grayscale and for the slope we're going to use the directional noise 4. So let's crank up the samples, let's set the blur mode to max and set the intensity to 1.5. And why the max mode as you can see when we set it to minus this will happen and with blur the following will happen, we don't want that at all. I think max is a really nice result for what we are after. Alright so if you can see here there's a bit of moss build up i'm just gonna call it moss build up uh, on the planks right there and to achieve that we're going to make this mask right here so what you want to get is this shape you could also use this shape and just use a translate like this right here so the settings are pretty much all the same output size is the same it's pretty much standard the only thing that's been cranked down is the y size then with a transform, we hold shift to drag it up, up and down straight without, well, screwing anything up. Or you can just use the sliders right here. I put it quite low like this right here. As you will see in a bit, we're going to blur it. And then we're going to use a directional warp with the pertinent noise. So if we set the intensity to a pretty high number, as you will see, our blur right here will get stretched out if we set the warp angle to go up like this which gives us a really natural form so now that we have our moss mask and our planks we're just going to blend the two together let's get a blend node in right there let's hook them up this on the background and the moss mask on the foreground and let's use an add linear to get it blended in now looking at the reference, as you can see, some of the planks, the lines, they stop at the moss mask, but some go through it as well. So to achieve this, we want to get an histogram scan in and a directional warp. What we want to do is get this bad boy right here, the tile generator we used a random luminance with. So grab the output and put it into a histogram scan node. And all you want to do is just set the contrast to one and just play around from here as you can see i'm just going to hook this up right here to show you the example as you can see right here these lines will start appearing and when we crank up the position more will appear and if we lower it more will disappear so i personally felt this was a good number to go with we're going to hook it up in our directional warp with our planks as the input and our histogram scan as the intensity input and then we're just gonna get the warp angle turned all the way down and set the intensity to 61 or 70 or whatever. Just make sure you're using a high input and that these numbers are round off because if they aren't, if we do this for example, as you can see, you get some, some weird effects we don't really want. So to make the lines a little bit thicker, we're going to get in a levels node, hook it up. And from there, I'm just going to play around to get some harder lines in there. All right, so watch closely for a lot is going to happen in this blend node right here. First, we want to get in a slope blur grayscale, our favorite node. Let's hook up the moss mask we made into the grayscale and use our clouds too as the slope. Now we're getting the following effect, which looks pretty cool. Let's set the samples all the way up and let's put in intensity of 0.65. Now let's invert the grayscale and hook it up to our opacity input in the blend node. We want to hook up our levels to the background, select it and hit D to dock it. And let's get our tile generator, this one right here, in the foreground. To make it a bit more organized, what you can do is hit Alt, you get this little dot right here, click and there you go. All right, so let's set the blend mode to multiply and the opacity to 0.12. There we go, so we got some height difference going in our planks, we got our planks running through our moss mask on some places, and we got the mask in place as well, all in one blend node. So we pretty much got the base of our planks, and it's already time for detailing, so what you want to grab is a multi-directional warp. Let's hook up our blend node in the input, and our directional warp from over here as the intensity input. 
that you want to set the intensity to 20 and that's pretty much it you can play around with the directions if you want and the warp angle but i just find that this works fine as well what I was looking for mainly here was to cover some bits, as you can see right here. You got some directional, some interesting wooden lines going, if that's the right word. I could do those in the albedo as well, but I thought it would be nice to add a bit of detail to the height and normal. Then we're going to blend this together, get a blend node out, this in the foreground, this one in the background, and yes, use the mask right here for the opacity, since we don't want those wood lines to go into our moss mask and let's set the opacity to 0.15 now you barely see them in here but believe me you will see them in here so after blending in the first batch of details you want to go for the second one and we want to get in a directional warp as usual set the intensity pretty high around 50 let's round this off to 54 and get a purlin noise with a low scale and just use a disorder or random seed which you prefer hook it into the intensity input and make sure the warp angle is set to the right or left whatever you prefer make sure you use whole numbers because if we do this for example as you can see we get this right here all right so let's use a slow blur grayscale to get some details going let's hook it up to our clouds 2 node samples high and intensity low and from there we can just use a blend there we go put it in the foreground and this one in the background and let's use a max lighten to get the details in let's crank it down a little bit i think 0.3 is a nice number to have and there we go so just to make some room for the plaster we're going to use another blend node and we're going to use a transform 2d node we want to grab our shape right over there Hook it into the foreground and the blend node in the background. Set it to subtract. And then what you want to do, you don't have to worry about tiling. Just make this a bit bigger and decide how high you want your planks to be. I'm just going to use this height right here and this will result into the following. Alright, so that's our planks gone. Let's put a frame around it. Alright, and let's head over to the horizontal planks right here. Alright, so for the horizontal planks we're going to need transform nodes and blend nodes. Let's get three of those in and a blend node. What we want to do is grab our shape and just plug them in each and every one of them. From there we want to plug in two of them into our foreground and background of our blend node. And from here what you want to do is just look at your reference and see how the horizontal planks are placed. For now, just eyeball it. We will go over it later to get it in the right spot. But for now, just try to make a shape like this. As you can see right here, we have one on top and one at the bottom right here. Now, you might be wondering what the third one is for. And that's for the small plank, which is going along right here. But first, let's focus on the two biggest planks. So let's get a baffle in like this. There we go. Hook it up and set the distance to minus 0.02. So we get a small baffle going like this. From there, to gain a bit more control on the baffle, we can hook up a levels node. There we go. And we can just play with the slider to extend our baffle or make it smaller. To be fair, this is optional. Just look at how it looks for you, uh, if you like it or not. Uh, this is purely optional. All right, so after level, we're going to get in our favorite node, a slope blur grayscale. Hook up the level node or the baffle node to the slope blur grayscale. You can dock it if you want to. And for the intensity, we're going to grab the directional noise 4. So let's crank up the samples and lower the intensity to, let's say, 0.2 and set the blur mode to min just like the previous one what this does instead of going outside it just pushes the shape inwards and with this we get some nice wood chipping all right so let's copy this node ctrl d or ctrl c ctrl v let's get rid of the levels node and let's just hook our top one our transformation 2d we haven't used yet into the grayscale input we're just gonna stay with the direction noise 4 as our slope and just use the same settings oh sorry and just use the same settings so even though we got some chipping on the edges going on the wood on itself is still pretty boring we don't really have the detail we see right over here 
So to fix that we want to move this out of the way a little bit and get another directional noise in. Just keep it at its basic settings and let's get a slow blur grayscale in like this, hook it up and for a slope we're going to use the clouds too. As usual crank up the samples and lower the resolution. So one thing I haven't explained yet I think is why I've set these notes right here to have such a low resolution as you can see right here. So basically with a low resolution as you can see you get the full range of suits while if we crank up the resolution to what it would normally be the chipping will be a lot smaller. Well, if we decrease the output size of the noise, the detailing the clouds to now generate will be a lot bigger. This doesn't have any effect on the output of your material. It purely has effect on how big these details are. All right, so let's dock this note right over here and get a blend in like this one. Set it to min darken. And let's hook up our slow blur grayscale in the foreground and the grayscale our little plank right here into the background and let's set it to point 18. Even though you can barely see it, it's actually quite, quite strong. So what I want to do now is just copy this blend node right here, hook up our slow blur grayscale from the two planks right here into our background and this one in our foreground to get some detail going on this one right here as well. Let's even set this one to point 13. And now to bring it all together, let's hook up this one to a background and this one to a foreground. Set it to subtract and let's set it to 0.3. All right, so it's time to merge the two together. What we want to get is a blend node and get a contrast node in as well. Let's duplicate it and hook one up over here and let's hook one up to the planks. So on the high map, we want our horizontal planks to be higher than our vertical planks so let's set our vertical planks to a luminosity of minus 0.6 and our horizontal planks to a luminosity of minus 0.3 now grab your blend node and let's put the horizontal ones on top vertical ones on the bottom and let's put it on max lighten and there we go we can even lower the intensity of the horizontal ones a little bit by setting it to 0.85 for example and well there we are if it doesn't match up with the horizontal planks from here, what you can do is just grab your transformation 2D node and just start experimenting around to get the right shape. Same for this one right here, just move it along until you have what you like. So for the plaster, it's almost funny how easy it is. Let's get a slow blur grayscale in. Let's hook up our Perlin noise right here. For a slow, we're going to use our clouds too. Samples up high and let's set our intensity to 1.4. All right, so for the mask, we want to get a transformation 2D node in. Let's hook this one up right there and let's get a blur HQ grayscale in. And let's set the intensity to 2.5. Now let's hook this one up to the mask input. This one to the background and our plaster. Let's add a contrast node first to bring down the contrast a little bit actually quite a bit and then hook it up to the foreground there we go and let's set it to max lighten as you can see it goes over some of the planks what you want to do is just grab your transformation 2d node and just drag it up until you get the following result so let's lower the opacity a little bit to 0.65 and there we go so let's put a frame around everything and there you have it, your height map and normal map are pretty much done. So we got our planks right here, we got our horizontal planks right there and our plaster. As you can see in the reference, most will be done with the diffuse map. So that's why I kept the plaster quite easy since you don't want too much detail going on right here. For the planks, it was mostly getting the right height down and the right detail. Again, most will be done in the diffuse section. So honestly, you just wanna keep it pretty basic and get the big shapes going. We'll be worrying about the smaller shapes and details in the diffuse section, which we'll be heading to right now. All right, so now for the most interesting part, we're going to look at how the color is done. And most of the stuff happens here, in my opinion. And there are some pretty simple techniques to use. As you can see, 
we go fairly quickly from this to this. So let's do a quick breakdown first and after that we're going to do a full from scratch creation uh, of the diffuse map. So, so far one of my favorite maps for stylized or hand painted looks is the crunch map 13. It works wonderful with of course our favorite node, the slow blur grayscale. And if you add some directional warps to it, you get some pretty interesting painterly looking looks. So we just blend it together with two colors. And from there, all we do is take out the ambient occlusion node, mask out our moss buildup right here. We're going to use a small slow blur grayscale to add some stylization and details to it. And use a gradient map with a couple of values. And then we just blend together with the previous blend. And from there, all we do then with the mask we have right here from the AO map, we add some red color to create this nice AO effect as you can see right here. So for the mask build up, most of the magic happens within the mask. So we just start out a dirt gradient, use the levels on it, slow blur grayscale to stylize it, our favorite note. Directional warp to push it up a little bit, don't worry about this at all. Because we're just going to lower it down and use our directional warp with the planks we've made uh, right here. So what it does, every plank has its own variation of the mask. All we do then is blend it with some different values to create some higher, darker looking moss patches and some softer ones. And from there all we do is just blend it with this one color and there you go. So as you can see with the reference image I'll put on screen right now. But as you can see there are a couple of highlighted spots on the planks. So to create this all we do is just get a crunch map 004 out. Use a slow blur grayscale on it. Bit of a warp and of course a direction warp to get the planks in there. We just blend it out so it doesn't affect the plaster. And from there we just blend it in. So now we are literally almost there already. So as you can see in the reference image there's quite a bit of green going on. And we want some detailing in the wood as well. So to do this a very simple and easy way. We're going to use a Grinch map. Use our favorite node on it. Use a directional warp to get a random variation on each plank. Mask out the plaster. And then blend in with this green color right here. And for the soft wooden detail. As you can see right here the highlights. All I've done is use a scratches generator. A slow blur grayscale. And a gradient map. And just blend it in, there you go. As you can see there's quite a bit of difference right there. I really like this detail. Then we add the green. And last but not least, take care of the plaster. We're going to add some splatters in there as well as we've seen on the reference image. And again, that's really simple as well. We're just going to use a Grinch map like this one right here. Use a non-directional warp for it. To get some sort of a painting style going. Use the histogram scan to pick out the bigger shapes. A directional warp. Mask out the planks. We're going to add some texture to it and then just use a color node and there you go, you have some nice platters in there. So in my opinion this is optional but I want to add the paper in which you've seen in the reference as well, the little um, signs on the wall. And I will quickly cover these two but in my opinion if you want to skip them feel free to do so. All it does in the end result is add these little papers right here. And that's it. As you can see it's really quite easy to build up these colors and get the stylized look going. All right, so let's move over here and let's make it from scratch. All right, so let's jump right into it. Let's get a Grunge Map 13. Honestly, again, feel free to take any other Grunge Map and just experiment. That's how you learn the most. And a slope blur grayscale. So now let's hook these up. And for the slope, we are actually going to use this noise right here, the direction noise 4. So from here, I'm really sorry, but it's going to be a bit of a mess. Let's grab this one right here. And we're going to set everything to max. So now let's get a blur HQ grayscale in and let's set it to 11 with the same noise we've used here. And then we're going to use a directional warp. Hook this up right here and set the intensity to 83. Let's have a little play with the warp angle. One thing you want to play with as well, if you want more contrast or not, is to go to your original Grinch map and just play with the contrast right here. So from here we're going to hook our directional warp up to a blend node, set it to copy, just the standard settings and we're going to use these two colors right here. 
now I've used this color scheme right here. I'll put it on screen right now, just make a screenshot of it if you want. So just pick the colors from there. However, I would recommend is to just play around with the colors yourself. Maybe you find that a dark color works better than a lighter one. Um, but yeah, I definitely pick some of them from here and adjust them a little bit to my own liking. If you want the exact same colors, I will make sure to put the color codes on screen every time so you can copy them. All right, from here, let's move on to the next part. Let's get our AO node, hook up our height. And you want to be using the following settings to get the following results. From here, we're going to use a slow blur grayscale and actually use our plaster we've made over here as the slope. We're going to set the blending mode to max to keep our shapes and set everything to max. From there, we're going to get a gradient map in. And what I did myself was just pick a gradient and just do literally this. And from there, I would just select random keys and just start deleting them, throwing them around until I have a result I'm happy with. But to keep things simple, I'm just going to show every key and the color code so you can copy it if you want or just experiment yourself with the color palette and the reference image. So let's get a blend node in and let's blend these together. We're going to set this as the background. We're going to use this as the foreground and we're going to use the scrunch map right here as a mask. Again, do feel free to go back at any time to your graphs right here and just change settings for you to get the most optimal result you like. So we're going to add another blend right here, hook this up to the background and a uniform color and hook this up to the foreground. Here is the color code if you need it. Of course, we're going to need a mask, so we're going to make that right now. So we want to head back to our Planck's base graph and get a level node in, hook this bad boy up to this one right there, drag it over to your colors. From there, we're going to increase the intensity like this. And we are going to add a blend node and put it in the foreground and set it to multiply. Now heading back to Planck's base again for the background, we're going to use this mask right here to mask out the moss. So let's grab that and hook it up to our background. And there you go. So heading back to our Planck's base, we're going to use this mask right over here for the to filter out the moss. So let's grab that one and hook it up right here. And there you go, this should be the result. From there, we're going to add another blend like this and set it to subtract. What you want to do then is get an inferred grayscale right there. Let's get our ambient occlusion, hook it up to the inferred grayscale, put it down there. And we're going to hook this up to the background and this one to the foreground to get the following result. And as you might have guessed from here, we're going to hook it up to the mask and there you go. So just to make you guys aware of what I'm changing, I'm going to crank up the opacity a little bit right here. Alright, so now for the must build up, let's get our dirt gradient in. First, before we do that, let's select all of these and put a frame around it and add it to our base colors, or just call it our base colors. I clean up the graph a little bit by docking some notes. And now let's move back to the moss. So let's get our levels node in like this and crank it down a little bit to get the following pattern. We want a little bit more of those. Let's grab the middle one right here and let's see what we can get. Since I don't like the spot right here, one thing we can do is just select our dirt gradient node and play around with the disorder a little bit. Something like this seems fine to me. And from there on, we're going to add our slow blur grayscale and a blur node. Let's hook it up and let's set the blur to 5 and hook it up to the slope and this one to the grayscale. Let's set the sound post to max. We're going to set this one to 12 and our blur mode to minus. Let's dock the node. And then we're going to use a directional warp right here with SR warp input. Our purling noise from over there. You can also copy it if you want, but I'm just going to do it as a follow. There we go. Let's hook that up. Let's set our warp angle a little bit up like this. Let's round it up, let's say 80, there we go. And set our intensity to something along the lines of 40. 
So let's duplicate our node right here. Hook this one up. And for the slope, we're going to head back to our planks base and use the tile generator right over here. So let's grab the output and let's put it into the intensity input. Set this to a quite a high number, let's say 212. And let's set it to 180 degrees. So let's get a transform 2D node and hook this one up right here. Then we're going to copy our directional warp and hook this bad boy up right there to the top. For our slope, however, we are going to use this one right here from the planks base, the tile generator. So let's grab our output from that one and let's hook it up to our input. There we go. We're going to set this to 180 and make sure to put the intensity to quite a high number. I would say 212 will do. So as you can see right here, you get this stretch right there. So what we want to do is get our transform 2D node, track this down a little bit until there's no stretch anymore. Hook it up and there you go. Now, if you have some repetition, like as you can see right there, all you can do is just increase the intensity and see whatever pattern you like. But believe me, you won't really see it, in my opinion, in the end result. One thing we can do as well is get in a blur HQ grayscale and hook up our planks to it. Let's use a really low intensity of two and then hook it up. And as you can see, you get an interesting effect near the edges. I kind of like it for stylized purposes, but that's completely up to you. So the thing we want to do then is get a blend in and set it to subtract. And we actually want to grab our planks right here, our horizontal planks, and mask those out. So we're going to grab the output right here and put it in the foreground. And there you go. So all that's left right now is get another blend node in with another uniform color. Here is the color code if you need it and give it some color. So of course, let's hook this one up to our mask or our opacity input. And for our background, we're going to use this one right here. And there you go. Now, as you can see, there's not really a lot of variation in the green right there. So just to solve this, what we can do is we can grab a blend node hook up our mask, hold down left alt and click on the line right here. And now let's hook this point up to the top right here and set it to subtract with an opacity of 0.45. And let's hook that one up. And there you go, you got a bit more color differentiation right there. And from there, I would just say play around with the height and the directional warp. All right, so from there, we're getting into the last little bit of details. Now we're going to add these spots right here. So let's put a frame around these. Let's call it Moss Buildup. All right, so then we wanna get in another grunge map. Let's go for this one right here. And let's set the contrast to something along these lines and use the following contrast. So from there, we're going to use a blur. Let's set it around 15 and a slope blur grayscale. This one needs to be the slope and this one the input. And let's set our samples to the max and let's set this one to 0.31. So as you can see, what happens is the shape bursts out a little bit. And in my opinion, it gives a really nice effect. So let's use a directional warp. Let's put it into our input. And from there, we are going to use our Perlin noise right over here. Let's set the degrees to 90 and the intensity to 120. And we get some nice blurred out paint brush uh, streaks. And what I especially like about this grunge map as well are these little details right here, like little spots of paint everywhere. So let's get another direction warp and plug this one in as the input. And for the intensity input, yet again, we are going to use our planks the ones right over here so as you can see we've made a shortcut right here so we're going to hook it up to this point all right let's set it to 210 for the degrees and then just play around with the intensity until you find something you like the best way to see that is to color it in on the planks so to finish it off we're going to get a blend and set our bending mode to multiply drag this one to the background and let's head over to our plank base and to this node specifically right here and let's put in an inferred grayscale, hook it up, and let's drag it over all the way over here. 
hook this one up to the foreground and there you go then all we have to do is hook our nodes up and for this color i have used the following and they are your spots so we can head back to our directional warp node and change the intensity to get some spots on there which we like and of course one thing you can do as well is change the seed or the disorder of the grunge map so let's just change the seed and see what happens there just play around until you find something you like so for the final bit of detailing for the planks we're going to grab our grunge map 07 put it into a slow blur grayscale and for the slope we are yet again going to use our plaster so let's grab the output and plug it into our intensity input or our slope the samples all the way up and the intensity to seven one thing we want to do as well in our original grunge map is lower the balance and contrast a little bit so let's the balance to 0.27 and the contrast to 0.08 there we go now let's use our good old directional warp with the planks again so let's just copy this one right here for example there we go just duplicate it and hook up your slow blur grayscale to the top one just play around with the settings until you have something you like let's get in a blend and set it to multiply let's move this one up there we go set this one as the background and use this node right here as the foreground to filter out the planks or well make sure it's only applied to the, to the planks and then from here we're just going to grab our previous blend node with our colors hook it into the middle use the following color on top there's the color code for you and use this one as the mask and there you go just the blending mode to min darken and you get some pretty cool details right there some subtle green details all right so let's put some frames around them to organize and this bit adds so much to it but it's so extremely simple i'm not even gonna do it from scratch you're just gonna watch what you want to do is get a scratches generator in like this one right here crank up the supply number by quite a bit just play around with the settings get a slow blur grayscale in and again we're going to use our plaster right here as the slope from there on we're going to get our gradient map in here are your color codes And with the last one, we want to set A of alpha to zero. If this doesn't show up on your 2D view, what you want to do is press this button right here. Normally it's black, but if you press it, it shows opacity. From there on, just get a node in between here, a blend node, set it to copy and 0.5 and mask it out with the inferred grayscale right here. So it only applies to the planks. And there you go such a simple method to get so much detail in all right and now for the last bit for the plaster right there for the spots you can see right here what we want to do is get our grunge map 04 in set the contrast to 0.7 so you want to get a non-uniform directional warp in and a transformation 2d node so from a moss build up, what we want to do is grab the dirt gradient node and plug it in into our transform 2D node right here. Just rotate it at 180 degrees. So let's hook this one up to our warp angle input and this one on top. And for the middle, yet again, we are going to use our plaster. So with our plaster in the middle, the grunge map on top and transformation 2D right there. We're going to get the following result if you use the following settings right here. And just as usual, just experiment with the settings right here. So let's set the seed to one, for example. And personally, I like this a bit more. The more wide areas are a bit more spread out instead of centered. So just play around whatever feels right to you, pretty much. So let's get a blur grayscale and histogram scan in. So let's hook this one up and set the intensity to, let's say, four. Let's hook it up to our histogram scan and use the following settings for position and contrast. Then we're going to use a directional warp, so let's hook this one right in. And for our warp intensity, we're going to use this node right over here. So let's set our intensity to 41 and our degrees to 236. Now let's get a blend in, so this only applies to the plaster, so let's put this in the background. We're gonna head over to our plaster and grab this node right here. And let's set it to multiply. 
and from there we're gonna get another blend node there we go and hook it up to these two inputs and for our foreground we're going to use this node right over here so let's set this to subtract and from there just play around with the opacity settings if you want to i would just recommend to let it at one and then we just get our usual blend in with the following uniform color there's your color code hook up this one to the mask input and for the background we're going to use this one right here and there you have it some spots on your plaster so there you have it as you can see you have the render right here and the reference image right here we didn't put on the big red blood spots i didn't really like them um, but overall i think it's pretty solid so please let me know as well how your result looked make sure to post it in our subreddit r slash and now for the last part i'm gonna do a little breakdown not from scratch but a little breakdown for these posters or papers on the wall right here so if you came for the breakdown and from scratch build up and that's all you want to see, then I want to really thank you for watching the video. Let me know what you thought about it and make sure to post your results in the subreddit. Pretty much the rest is optional in my opinion. We're going to go over on how these papers are done in a small quick breakdown and summarize what we made. So let's jump right into it. So for the papers, what we're going to do is start off with a shape, a shape in the form of a disc and a square. Here you have the settings. So let's start with the simple paper right down here on the bottom. So what I did, I used an edge detect and set the edge width to 1, but cranked up the edge roundness quite a bit. Then I blend it to get these rounded corners and even after that we can make them bigger or smaller. I use a transformation 2D node to make it a bit smaller and after that I use an edge detect to work on this bit right here. Use a transform to lower it a little bit and blur it a little bit since as you can see right here it's quite a sharp edge right there but then the blackness blurs out a little bit into the paper. And then I just subtracted it from one another. And to get a sharp edge, all I did was get another transformation 2D node. Made this one a bit smaller and position it on top. So you get a sharp edge here and a blur there. Then I use a Perlin noise with the scale of 9 to give it a bit of a warp for a paper look. And use a transformation 2D node to get it into the right position. Now for the top one, a bit more complicated but still quite easy as well. I start off with a round shape. Then use a transformation 2D with the following settings. Blended this one right here with the shape we used down there. Use an edge detect to gather the edges as you can see right here. Use a transformation 2D node to scale it down a little bit and then blend it together with the shape we made right here. Then for the text it's quite simple. What I did was just use transformation 2D nodes to make these little bits right there and just blend them together like this. Use the direction warp for the paper look, transformation 2D to get it into the right position. And just for my fun, I added my logo in there. Blended those together. And for the little magic trick that made these black outlines right here to make it even more stylized. What I did was use a multi-direction warp on itself with the following settings. As you can see, you get some interesting color variations right there. And again, I've used this node right here from our base colors. Oh, sorry, one. this one, the direction warp right here from our base colors. Use a transformation 2D to get it into the right position. And then use a gradient map. And for the cartoony black lines, I use this one right here, really close up on this one. It was a bit of playing around to be fair, but in the end it worked out. Here are the color codes if you need them. And for this one right here, I just set the alpha to zero. And from there, I use the blend node as you would normally do. All right, so just to summarize for the plank base, we start out with these four noises right here. We use a tile generator to get a plank sorted and a slow blur grayscale to get the line stylized. From there, we mask out our moss build up. Use a direction warp with another tile generator to bring down some of the lines into the moss. Then we made a mask for the moss and blended it in. With some variation in value for the planks. 
For detailing, we used our multi-directional warp grayscale to get these lines in right here. And we used a blend to get them in really subtle. And again, a directional warp and a slow blur grayscale to get even more details in. And then we mask them out to only have the planks down there. For our horizontal planks, we grabbed the shape node right here from our plank base to make three kinds of planks right there. We blend them together and used a bevel and after that a slow blur grayscale to get some wood chipping in. And then we blended everything together with a bit of texture from this directional noise right here. And to make the top plank right here, we used this one right here with a slow blur grayscale to get some wood chipping in, some texturing and blend it together with a substract and put the opacity really low. From there, which is the task of blending everything together from the planks to the horizontal planks and to the plaster, which was really easy. Just a pearl noise with a slow blur grayscale, lower the contrast and blend it together with a mask. And that was our hard map. Now for the best part, the coloring. We started off with a Grinch map and put it into a slow blur grayscale and a directional warp to give it a nice stylized painty look. Used these colors right here and made it into a color output right there. Then we used an AO node on our height map. Use a slow blur on it to stylize and get some detail in there. A gradient map and then we mixed the two together to get our base color. And for some extra detail use an inverted AO map to get some nice AO in there. Then we went to the moss build up, use a dirt gradient map, use a levels to extract some information and use a slow blur grayscale to stylize it. From there use a directional warp and a transform 2D to get it into the right position and get some plank details going and get some variation for each plank. Then a blend to mask out the horizontal planks and another blend to add some variation in the value and then we blend it in with a green color. So for the spots on the planks we use a Grinch map and use a slow blur grayscale to get a stylized effect going. Two directional warps, mask it out so it's only visible on the planks and blended it in. Then for my opinion, my favorite part in this is using the scratch generator with a slow blur grayscale. Get some wood details going, use a gradient map and just blended it in on top to get these lovely details in. And for the slight green color in there we used a grunge map in a slow blur grayscale to stylize it, directional warp to get variation for each plank, as mask it out and then just blend it in. And last but not least for our spots on the plaster we use a grunge map yet again with a non-uniform directional warp, powered by our plaster and our moss flipped upside down. Then use a blur and histogram scan to extract some of the bigger shapes, a directional warp to add some painty style to it, mask it out so it's only visible on the plaster. Add some texture or different great values to it and blend it in with some color. So there you have it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave some feedback if you have any and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.